Welcome to Desk Geek. So we've had another full week of Linux use. You can see here that I'm using Manjaro and that's the next distribution I've been testing. Been enjoying Manjaro thoroughly. It's a very complete uh, distribution. It, it comes solid with packed full of software that I use on a regular basis and the only issues that I've really come across are with Pulse Audio and my USB interface. <clears throat> I'm not a fan of Pulse Audio. I'm not sure um, the difference yet. I haven't gone and done research between the audio system that uh, software that Ubuntu utilizes versus uh, Arch. Um, I, I think also maybe what's used primarily in Ubuntu, but I, I could be wrong. Feel free to correct me in the comments. But the, the audio interface, for instance, this. Uh, when you right-click on your icon, I get this dialogue of, I don't even know what, some, some type of um, setting for various types of surround sound settings like 2.1, 4.1, 5.1, and a bunch of gibberish to me versus being able to just pick the audio system that I want to utilize. I would expect something like this to be hidden within the settings of the specific sound device I'm using. So for instance, if I'm using my sound card, I may go in and interface with it and tell it I want it to you know, power my 5.1 surround sound system. So I'll set it to 5.1. Um, but I don't like that the main control for my audio switch source is this. Um, secondly, with Pulse Audio, this GUI is really neat for recording, for instance. So any software that I'm using, I can set up and tell it what I want to use at that moment. Um, but what happens is my Scarlet 2i2 USB interface, if something's not constantly utilizing the sound source, it turns it off. And that creates static and problems there. So uh, I'm not quite sure how to resolve that yet. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But again, when I look at this interface, I just want to select, this is the interface I want you to use. I don't want to see every interface that I have and no real way of saying, use this one. Um, I'm, and again, this may be my lack of knowledge when it comes to this interface and learning more, but I just, um, it's confusing, it's not intuitive, and I, I personally don't like it so far. But that's the only piece I don't like. As far as uh, Caden Live, GIMP, and everything else, they run flawlessly. Gaming obviously works very well, as I showed Steam Link interfaces very well. I love the customization options within Manjaro. So um, I got to figure out something with Pulse Audio. I'm hoping maybe I can just completely remove it and use a different software interface for my audio or doing some more research, I'll discover the way to interact with it, but I don't find it very intuitive. Um, Outside of that, the only other issue that I've run into is iPhone related. So uh, short of putting Windows 10 in a virtual machine or dual booting into Windows, there's no way to, you can install iTunes. You can even plug in your iPhone and pull all of your photos off of it or movies that you take very easily. And the interface works across all Linux distributions very well. But as far as backing up your iPhone, there's... No way to sync your device and back up. So option would be then to either keep the iPhone and not be able to back it up, get iCloud interface. So that's another option. You can pay for space, which Apple charges ridiculous amounts of money for a very limited amount of space. In my opinion, I got a 60 gigabyte phone. I take a lot of videos on it. So backing that up, I think, I don't know, it's 50 or $60 a year, something like that. So my solution to that particular problem is I'm going to switch to Android. So I got an Android phone coming today, an HTC 10. Pretty excited about it. I'll do a review on it. Uh, Android, obviously, being a Linux-based uh, OS itself, will interface perfectly with Linux. So if you're not syncing or backing up your iPhone on a regular basis, not a big deal. 
um, but certainly something to consider if you're an iPhone user. So um, outside of that, I wanna touch on some comments. Uh, so we've had a lot of community support, which is fantastic, except for the one person in uh, the community that said, I don't know nothing, and that was the wording, and I look like a pre-op transgender. It happened. <laughs> so obviously I deleted their comment, but uh, pre-op transgender. So I guess what they're trying to say is that uh, I'm such a beautiful man that I could be a woman, maybe something like that. But uh, the troll, only one troll out of probably 50 or 60 comments. So not bad. Better luck than most channels have. Um, that one really cracked me up. I got to tell you, uh, these individuals can be really brave when they're stuck behind a keyboard and a screen. I mean, the things they would say, and, and I don't know if they think maybe because I'm a geek or something that they could get away with that. If they were to say it to me in person, they probably wouldn't say anything to me in person. But uh, trust me, you wouldn't want to say that to me in person. But anyways, check out this cool shirt. My wife got me another Linux based shirt here, Got Root. I think that's an awesome shirt right there. So she picked that up on thinkgeek.com. And I love this shirt. So I'm going to be sporting this around everywhere. So excited about that. Uh, everything that we're going to do next week will probably be heavily based around distributions. So we'll talk about my thoughts on Mint, we'll talk about my thoughts on Ubuntu, Ubuntu Mate. Um, Kubuntu and some of the other ones that I've tried throughout the weeks here. And so I think that's going to be an exciting video. Um, the last thing I'll mention is the there were comments in uh, the video I did about gaming, some very passionate exchanges going on. Um, one of the things I want to point out, I'm not trying to call any specific person out, but one, and I think it was probably just being in the passion of the moment of arguing with somebody. They said Linux is a niche market made for neckbeards. So I don't think I have a neckbeard. I want to clarify this that, you know, Linux being a niche market. Um, I think hipster was used as well, being a hipster thing, that type of stuff. That. It really makes no sense. If, if you knew anything about technology, and I've spent 17 years of my career in telecommunications networking, you would know that not only do your operating systems have basis in Linux, especially Android, but there's some ties you can make with iPhone as well. Uh, but the entire network facility that runs these cellular networks is heavily, heavily based on Linux solutions. On top of that, you've got major governmental organizations utilizing Linux. You're talking nuclear submarines running Linux. We're talking federal government, Navy, the works, US Postal Service. But not only that, you have Google, who has their own form of Ubuntu called Gubuntu or something along those lines that they utilize. You have Amazon whose entire mass database of information and web services is Linux based. Of course you have uh, Cisco, you know, running their hardware off of Linux based uh, distributions. It just goes on and on and on. Um, Linux is a part of your life, whether you realize it or not. There's nothing niche about Linux. There's nothing neckbeard. There's nothing hipster about it. Um, maybe you can make that claim for Mac stuff, but I don't even think that would hold true. Um, when you've got New York stock exchanges and everything else running off of Linux, it starts to become more than that. ATM machines that you use running off Linux operating systems. One of my favorite Linux-based shows is the Linux Action Show. 
and they often have a segment called you know i can't remember the exact name of the segment but essentially every week they start with seeing linux out in the wild and people uh, discuss if their business uses linux behind the scenes or that they see a business that's using linux and there's been some fascinating uh, uncovers for the amount of linux utilization and a lot of businesses don't utilize it so if anything would be um, niche market it certainly wouldn't be Linux. That would be one of the furthest things from the truth. And so I just want to clarify that. And again, it's not uh, meant to start a, an argument or witch hunt by any means, but it's very important that people understand that Linux is a part of their daily lives, whether you install it on your PC or not. It's everywhere. So... Um, and I'm not a Windows hater. I love Windows. I know Windows has most of the market share in PC, although, you know, you have to ask yourself, why did Windows invest $500,000 in the Linux Foundation? Why is Microsoft showing up to Linux-based conferences and things like that? Um, why are they creating interfaces within their own operating system for Linux? Because they understand that there's a huge market shift that could potentially occur and has occurred in some basis. Uh, some people put Linux at about a 2% market share. I've seen everything from 2 to 5%. Uh, most people probably fall right in the middle, somewhere around 3% of PCs run a Linux-based distribution. To put it in perspective, Mac owns about 8%. So Windows is obviously the primary operating system. But if you ask a company like BlackBerry or Palm, who controlled and dominated the complete market for what would have been smartphones at that time, is Apple going to be able to come in and take all of that market from them? Or Android, uh, they probably would have laughed you out of the room. And here we are. So just because something is one way now doesn't mean that's the way it will stay. And uh, obviously, Linux could very easily uh, create a d dominating uh, marketplace capture uh, with a few more mistakes from Microsoft and by folks talking more about Linux. So in any case, I hope that covers all of it. So next week, distributions. This week, we've had a lot of fun, a lot of great conversation. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Welcome to the community. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. It's Friday. It's time to celebrate and have some fun. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't watch the video.